Greetings, esteemed masters. I welcome you back to my class. I hope that you have been keeping well. Today, we are going to discuss an ancient enemy of the Jedi, a group which predates even our conflict with the Sith. They were an esoteric group of shamanistic sorcerers that were pledged to the idea of human supremacy over all other beings. Dubbed the Order of the Terrible Glare, they were an organization of dark Jedi that served the oppressive, xenophobic, pious Dei Republic. Before we dive further, I would like to preface with an excerpt from Darth Matu's Holocron. The Order of the Terrible Glare is so ancient that Matu's Holocron has become the single largest repository of knowledge left about them outside the Tedrin and Great Holocrons. We would be foolish to ignore such a record, but I must warn each of you to be cautious of the dark side. We must know the precepts of our enemies, but we must not fall prey to them. All proper precautions were taken in the procurement of this recording. The Sith are not the only rival that the Jedi have faced in their long history. Once, long ago, an ancient religious order known as the Pious Dei seized control of the Republic. We have discussed the Dei before, my apprentice. They were a movement of human supremacists who waged war against aliens from across the galaxy. A splinter faction of the Jedi, enamored by the idea that human beings stood supreme over all, broke from the Order and joined with the pious Dei, serving the Supreme Chancellor as sorcerers and seers. This splinter group dubbed themselves the Order of the Terrible Glare, and they were the greatest enemies of the Jedi for over a thousand years. As you just heard, the Order of the Terrible Glare were a splinter faction of Dark Jedi who became enamored with the beliefs of the Pious Dei. A short history lesson is needed to provide context. In 11,987 BBY, over 10,000 years ago, a radical religious group was able to seize power within the Republic by having their leader, Contuspex, elected to the position of Supreme Chancellor. This religious group followed a monotheistic deity they dubbed the Goddess, and they believed her to be the mother of all human beings. They believed that the goddess created humans to rule and that aliens were a species that were on front before her. They saw aliens as little more than second class citizens at best and animals at worst. The Dei had a rigid hierarchical structure. They used this structure to push the goddess's will all the way to the highest office in the Republic. They were a pervasive force in society and Contuspex used his position to institute a series of reforms that merged the government body of the Republic with that of the Pious Dei. There came to be no difference between government officials and members of the Dei, and many positions that had historically been elected became hereditary, passed down among the most powerful families in the Dei from one generation to the next. The Republic became a militant theocracy bent on the subjugation of aliens at all costs. Contuspex launched a massive attack against the Huts, an organized religious effort that he dubbed a crusade. Day forces committed atrocity after atrocity against the aliens in Hut space and the stars became drenched in blood. The Jedi, for our part, refused to take part in such injustice. We declared ourselves wholly separate from the Dei and retreated to our library world of Ossus. But not all of the Jedi disagreed with the pious Dei. The human-centric philosophy of the goddess appealed to many Jedi Knights, and when the Order withdrew to Ossus, they refused to follow. Instead, they founded the Order of the Terrible Glare and pledged themselves to the goddess wholesale. They used their natural gifts in the Force to peer into the future in the name of the Dei, and they developed strange technologies utilizing ancient alchemies. They could call down terrible Force storms to ravage the enemies of the Goddess, and the Order quickly became a subsect of priests sworn to the service of the Chancellor. 
They were an order of shamans who worshipped only the goddess, and they opposed the Jedi with their every breath. The Order of the Terrible Glare became vital to the reign of the pious Dei. There was a shaman present on every major world held by the Dei, and they oversaw the crusades that were prosecuted against the aliens of the galaxy, using their force powers to drive the legions of the goddess forward. The Order reigned supreme over the galaxy for 1,000 years. Their only rivals, the occasional Jedi Knight Errant who refused the will of the Council to fight against the pious Dei on their own. The High Shaman, the leader of the Terrible Glare, became one of the most powerful people in the galaxy, second only to the Supreme Chancellor. The pious Dei launched over 30 crusades between 11,987 BBY and 10,966 BBY, each one more brutal than the last. They utilized massive cathedral ships as the base of their power, floating holy fortresses from which pious Dei inquisitors and armies carrying the goddess's standard could issue forth. The galaxy suffered under the Dei's terrible reign. The Jedi were at last stirred to action by the Kamasi, who went to Asus to beg the Jedi to act on behalf of the galaxy. Jedi Grandmaster Biel Daktavis was moved by the Kamasi's pleas, and in a daring move, a Jedi strike team was able to board the Supreme Chancellor's flagship and inject code that launched all cathedral ships onto randomized hyperspace vectors. The final Contuspex, Contuspex the 19th, was captured and put on trial on the world of Kamas. He was found guilty of crimes against the galaxy and imprisoned for the rest of his life. The Supreme Temple of the Pious Dei on Coruscant was destroyed and Grandmaster Daktavis was forced to seize control of the Chancellorship in order to restore the Republic government. The Jedi Imperium reigned for the next 1,000 years before eventually handing power back to the Senate. The Order of the Terrible Glare, however, persisted beyond the fall of the Dei. While they were integral to the structure of the Dei, the High Shaman had always been careful to keep the Order's hierarchy a separate entity. They were a special class within a special class, an elite group of mystics among fanatics. The Order had made their home on the Outer Rim world of Garn, a bleak, desolate place devoid of most forms of life. Garn was far from the bustling core and the center of Dei power, which meant the Order of the Terrible Glare was able to survive Contuspex the 19th's fall. The Order swore a terrible revenge against the Jedi and they worked to attack us in whatever way they could. Grandmaster Ductavis was forced to bring the Republic's resources to bear. He launched an invasion of Garn that devastated the barren world and destroyed the Order of the Terrible Glare utterly. Only the High Shaman was able to escape the destruction by uploading his consciousness to one of the Order's strange machines. This consciousness persisted for the next 10,000 years luring erstwhile Jedi to Garn to be destroyed, ever seeking to fulfill the vengeance of the terrible glare. Rur was finally destroyed when he encountered a young Grandmaster Luke Skywalker, the founder of our iteration of the Jedi Order. Rur's destruction brought about a final end to the Order of the Terrible Glare, and their ancient evil was at last stopped for good. The truth, my friends, is that we know precious little of the Order of the Terrible Glare. Even the story I have just told you has been put together out of fragments of ancient records preserved in the heart of the Jedi Archives. The Terrible Glare were active so long ago that there is almost nothing left of them in the archaeological record. We know they were led by the High Shaman and utilized esoteric rituals, spells, and incantations to tap into their connection to the Force, but the precise nature of their internal hierarchy and the exact execution of their forced tradition has been lost to us. Biel Ductavis was quite thorough in the Terrible Glare's destruction, and we have precious little to study. Most of the information you just heard was first acquired by Luke Skywalker in his encounter with Rur, and later expounded upon by the tireless efforts of archivist Tioni Solasar, keeper of the great Entedrin holocrons. The Order of the Terrible Glare were once Jedi Knights, and thus we know they maintained a similar view of the Force. However, unlike the Jedi, 
They were all too willing to embrace the dark side, and they were ever eager to delve into forbidden, eldritch teachings in the name of expanding their power and in the name of their goddess. They were more like sorcerers than knights, and they were famous across the day controlled republic as prophets capable of charting the course of the future. The Order of the Terrible Glare employed dark alchemy to create unique technological devices. The computer that held the consciousness of High Shaman Rur was developed by the Terrible Glare utilizing a crystal matrix that has never since been replicated. Rur himself lured Grandmaster Skywalker and others to Garn by using a machine that could detect lightsabers even from thousands of light years away. Such a feat using the technology of over 10,000 years ago is not to be scoffed at. It is clear that the shamans of the Terrible Glare were alchemists of extreme skill and power. But perhaps the most important lesson that the Order of the Terrible Glare has to impart to us is the ubiquitous nature of the dark side. It is not just the Sith who wield corrupt power, and we need ever be wary of our own inner beliefs and ideals. Even before the Sith Code existed, Jedi fell. The dark side is as pervasive as life itself, and there will always be temptations that threaten to lure us away from the light. There will always be an enemy of the Jedi, because there will always be a dark side. There will always be champions of this darkness, just as we have always been champions of the light. The Order of the Terrible Glare were the champions of their time, wielding esoteric religious power in the name of human supremacy. They were corrupted by their own belief in their innate superiority over others. And I hope they stand as a lesson, a stark example of why the Jedi Code is enforced in the manner that it is. But that is all the time we have for today. I wish I had more to expound upon when it came to the Order of the Terrible Glare, but they are an ancient echo that is only barely remembered. Their legacy is one of warning that the Jedi can fall to darkness even without the Sith. The temptations of the dark side are ever present and subtle. They come to us in our own beliefs, in our prayers, in our ideals, in our feelings of righteousness. Such things can lead one astray as easily as emotions such as anger or fear. Meditate on this, my friends, and I encourage those who wish to know more to please examine the fragmentary records we do have preserved down in the archive. I am certain that the archivists would be pleased to assist you. Take care of yourselves, and until next time, may the Force be with you all.